Jerry Mello has been a fixture in this community for decades. We all feel and will continue to feel the loss of Jerry for a very long time. We want to offer this short collection of video clips to honor Jerry in this small way now. Because Jerry was involved in so many things, we have hours of footage of him and we hope to prepare a more thorough memorial at a later date. This snapshot is offered as a gesture of our respect for Jerry Mello. We begin with a 1996 interview he gave about the building of Timberwolf Stadium. Jerry and his wife have been the backbone of this ongoing project to provide a real stadium for this community for 15 years. Whether one agreed with Jerry or not on issues that came before the City Council or other boards that he sat on, it was always clear that he took his responsibility seriously and often made the effort to explain his reasoning on some of the difficult issues. We will miss his civic mindedness, his hard work, his abilities, his humor, and his dedication to this community. What you belong to and what they're doing. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for coming out here. I'm Jerry Mello. I'm one of the board members of the Mendocino Coast Sports Foundation. Uh, we're a local nonprofit group. And we're here at the uh, Fort Bragg High School with the permission of the uh, Board of Education. Our sole function is to improve this old athletic field right behind the high school gym into a first class, top notch stadium for Fort Bragg. It's really an improvement to the school property. All of us citizens are going to benefit from this. Uh, we're going to have a, probably in two to three years we're going to have a stadium in which a number of events can occur. Clearly we're going to have nighttime football uh, and that's great. Rather than uh, Sunday uh, after or Saturday afternoons, uh, most of the games will be on Friday evenings, more in line with the rest of the teams. We're the only place in the league without lights and we're going to have those in a couple of years. Real improvement here. You go to graduation. No more uh, reservations needed. The whole town can show up. We're going to have plenty of room here. About 2,600 seats. About 800 seats on the east side berm, where we are here right now, and roughly 1,800 seats on the west side, the big berm right behind us on the west side of the field. Uh, if you're a soccer fan, we'll be able to play uh, two soccer matches side by side on the field. Uh, two uh, matches at the same time. We have these weekends around here where soccer teams come from all over the state. It will effectively be two more soccer fields here uh, for those sorts of things. We're going to have an all-weather track. That means if you're in high school track, you can even run in the rain or the fog. And the same applies to those of us citizens who come out here and take a lap once in a while for our own enjoyment or uh, just keeping fit. So what we have here is again a local nonprofit group with a lot of support from the community. What you're seeing out here today with all this noise is all donated labor and equipment. Uh, money we're using, sure we are, but we're buying supplies with that. All the labor is local, donated by individuals and companies uh, who are only too happy to support us. And we appreciate very much the opportunity to, pre to appear on Channel 3. Thank you very much. I'm Jerry Mello. I'm a city council member in the city of Fort Bragg up in Mendocino County and right on the ocean. And we are certainly concerned about the opportunity or the intention of the legislature and perhaps the governor to take local funds to patch up something that is really a state problem. But we're very concerned about having to lay off police, having to lay off public works employees, and maybe other folks in the smaller departments in our uh, in our small 7,000 person city. So we're going to urge that people stand up much as they did in the October or in the May 19 election and tell the legislature that they need to fix the state budget problem with state money and not uh, become predators on local government. Thank you. As you will. As I will. <laughs> Thank you Mr. Mayor. Um, well, I think I can count, and I believe the, the staff recommendation is going to be upheld. Um, 
as you know, I, my wife and I participate in a nonprofit, and, and the way we have raised money is to hold events. And I really appreciate uh, the staff recommendation because I think in May or June, whenever that denial was made, there was not much of a plan that I could glean from the minutes of the public safety, uh, or I mean of the TAC committee. Um, and yesterday in reading this packet, I think I said earlier, uh, my question was, where was the plan? And it came in today. Uh, nonetheless, there were some uh, pretty good uh, public uh, presentations this evening and some good answers to some really good questions. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make a motion or second it, but I'm probably going to end up uh, supporting the event. And with because I think that we've had a number of people from businesses who have been on both sides of this and I I think we need to have uh, not a unanimous vote so that may not be very strong reasoning uh, I guess I in the end I'd be willing to take the chance okay we're uh at uh, Sherwood Road, right at the uh, end of the pavement, and where uh, the road is closed in the winter time. Uh, Sherwood Road was actually the first road built between Fort Bragg and the Interior Valley, or the Willits area. Uh, that was done more than a hundred years ago. It was actually the first road access between Fort Bragg and the Interior, and it, it shaved several days off the mail service. Uh, prior to the time of establishing this road, why the uh, access in and out of Fort Bragg was primarily by ship, by the uh, small schooners that carried lumber between the urban areas, San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, and Fort Bragg. So we're at the point uh, where this road is closed in the winter, and uh, we're asking folks to uh, to respect that, uh, we've had an awful lot of dirt uh, go into the Noyo River over the past number of years, and we're attempting to cut that down by this road closure. It, it, with us now is one of the, shall we say, the best cooks in the salmon barbecue, Mayor Jerry Mello. Jerry, you've been doing this a number of years. How's it going this morning? Uh, we're ahead of the game. We really are, no kidding. Wow. Uh, we got down here a little after 6 mm -hmm. and set the pits up, and at 7 o'clock we touched them off, and they're all ready to go now. It's, what, 9.15, 9.20? Yep. And uh, they're starting to marinate the salmon over here, and about 15 or 20 minutes we'll put the first batch on. Uh, by 11 o'clock we'll have the warmers full because we've been warned this year they're going to run people through twice as fast. They're going to run two lines rather than one and it's our job to keep the salmon cooked. We've got a good crew. We've got people from all the way as far south as Sebastopol here today. Lots of Fort Braggers, lots of folks from Ukiah and a few folks from as far down as Sebastopol. So we're doing great. We absolutely are. Now. Is there any estimation as to the number of people that are going to be here today? Well, looking around town, uh, the town is full. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't imagine that we won't feed uh, 5,000 people or so here. Ooh. That's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. Now, when, as, as I understand the process, you actually have two crews. One that's dedicated to marinating and one that's dedicated to cooking. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, Dave uh, uh, Sauer over here has uh, his famous recipe. And uh, you can even get a copy of the recipe here for his marinade. But he and his crew marinate the salmon for at least 20 minutes before it goes over to the grills. And uh, we also use marinade to uh, season the fish while it's cooking. And then we do have the crew here that cooks, and uh, everybody else does whatever else they do around here. But that's correct. Yeah, the salmon has to be marinated at least 20 minutes before it gets on the grill. Now, do you have to graduate from marinating to cooking, or is it just a plug-in kind of thing? Wherever they need somebody, they just plug you in. Actually, 
the way it worked, at least as long as I've been down here, is you're just given a job and you're expected to be here <laughs> next year. <laughs> That's great. Now, now this makes how many years of um, working at the Salmon Barbecue for you? Oh, I have no idea. Quite a few. Yeah. I, I have no idea. I have not kept track of it, but it's quite a few. How about if we get, get started, okay? It's 7 o'clock. And it's uh, time to call the meeting of the Fort Bragg Fire Protection Authority to order. And our first item is the Pledge of Allegiance, so we'll do that. Okay, we'll move to item three, which is to cancel the August meeting. Is there any objection to canceling the August meeting? Got a motion I like. <laughs> if Nagy was here, he'd vote no. <laughs> On general principle. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll just cancel the August meeting by, by agreement. That's our usual bit. But we should note that Biggie should attend. He should attend, you know, yes. He has to make up. Yeah. It's <laughs> a chance to make up. And the last yeah, item, uh, <laughs> no, go ahead. Uh, okay, the question is how, how have I seen it change? Well, clearly, uh, there's a great deal less reliance on forest products manufacturing jobs and on uh, fishing and the processing of uh, ocean foods. Uh, that's for a variety of reasons. It doesn't matter. The fact is that it has changed. Um, one of the things about Fort Bragg that makes it different from other lumber-based towns is that it never really was a company town. Uh, I was raised in the uh, Siskiyou County area where we had a lot of lumbering operations and most of the towns up there had large numbers of homes that were built and owned by the lumber companies um, and rented out to their employees. That didn't happen in Fort Bragg. Uh, Mr. Johnson, who was one of the primary founders of the uh, city of Fort Bragg and of the Union Lumber Company. Uh, when he took the property uh, in what is now Fort Bragg, he had a surveyor uh, lay this city out on a rectangular grid pattern. It, it was a remarkable planning job in, in my view. And I can recall when I came to work for the Union Lumber Company in 1966, in our map files, we had those original subdivision plats and we also had a handwritten deed book where Mr. Johnson uh, would have an, would hire an employee and he would offer a any lot that was available in town for ten dollars and he uh, did not require down payment but he did require the employee to commit to repay the loan at a dollar a month out of his uh, salary. That was a remarkable historic book. I believe that particular book is now in the Bancroft Library at the University of California at Berkeley. The Union Lumber Company and the Johnson family were very paternalistic, but they, they had a different I mean, they had a really different point of view in that they believed in ownership of a home, in ownership of property. Um, when I came here, uh, it was still the Union Lumber Company, and if you were a graduate of Fort Bragg High School or Mendocino High School and you wanted a job, the Union, or the Union Lumber Company would take care of you. They would find a place for you to work. And, and it was a, a wonderful system very paternalistic family, but they still believed in people making their own decisions, being responsible for their own property and their own families. And so it was a, it's different now. Uh, you can't buy a lot in Fort Bragg for 10 bucks, even at a dollar a month. Uh,